Welcome back to Alliance's Heroes, where heroes in business align. To be part of our super community and find out more about Alliance's, visit www.alliances.com. Now, back to our super host, David Kogan, founder of Alliance's. Thank you again. I got to tell you, I'm still bouncing off the wall from this morning hero show. I mean, we started off the show with the president of the Chamber of Commerce. We did a president, too, of the CEO and of a Republic Bank, Arizona Bank. I mean, huge bank here, local bank. We also just had the top-ranked memory athlete in the world. This guy holds seven world records for memory. Just incredible. But you got to make sure you listen real carefully to our next hero. You know how sometimes you maybe send or receive a bouquet of flowers, and you go, ah, you know what, that's nice, okay, you know, that's cool. Well, warning, you're going to get hungry from this interview, because today we have an outstanding example and supporter of American entrepreneurialism, all right? Tariq Farid is the founder and Chief Executive Officer of, which you all should know this brand, Edible Arrangements. That's Edible Arrangements, and you can go to edible.com. I mean, he's a pioneer and worldwide leader in high-quality designed fresh fruit arrangements. I mean, this is bouquets you can eat. So I got to ask you, what inspired you to start your company, Edible Arrangements? Well, I started my uh, well. First, thank you, David, for having me on. It's, it's great to be on your show. And uh, uh, first, uh, I started a, a flower business when I was about uh, 17 years old, kind of accidentally. Uh, the, there was a shop available. My father and I we approached the owner, bought it for about six thousand dollars because it was going out of business, and that kind of started the journey. And then when I saw around in the late 90s, these uh, fruit arrangements or fruit decorations being done. We just started playing around at the flower shop and came up with a, a, a group of designs. It wasn't as elaborate as what we ended up getting to now. And it started really simple with a 600-square-foot store in East Haven, Connecticut in 1999 with about seven, nine arrangements. And uh, the customers just loved them. And, and it's all history, as they say. Now, Turek, I got to tell you, I got a little bit of a complaint, and it was something that you just mentioned. Because these uh, pieces are so nice, I mean, I've had a variety of people send them to me. They're so nice. They're so cool, these designs and everything. I mean, I just don't want to even eat them. I want to just keep them in the refrigerator so I can keep looking at them because I can't believe someone can make fruit look so good. You know, of course, there's two objectives. When people are sending something, um, they want a wow. And our concept from the beginning was that as soon as you see the arrangement, the first word that must come to mind must be wow, wow. So there's that part of the gift arriving. And then, of course, you finish it off with a great taste. Any of our fruits, we, we don't use any preservatives. We don't use any add- additives. The objective is to make it fresh, deliver it quickly, let everybody enjoy it. Uh, and then, you know, if the indulgence is with the chocolate be it the, the double chocolate or the dark or the white chocolate, that just finishes off nice. So and, and that's, that's been the objective that you should look at it and, and really want to call the person who sent it and appreciate this great gift and then really enjoy it. Now, why did you, why did you decide to franchise edible arrangements instead of maybe opening up company stores all over? Well, two reasons. One, um, I couldn't get the money uh, to open company stores, and I never really, I mean, I, I was a, a, a couple of a shop owner of flower shops and had a little IT company on the side. Um, couldn't, you know, when I showed this concept to different people when we started it, they really didn't think it would go anywhere, and I never really was able to get the funding to open my own stores, let alone uh, kind of go national. Uh, so, uh, you know, we bootstrapped it in the beginning. And then this concept, I, I love the part of a Main Street owner, someone who understands the community, someone who uh, it, it's theirs. You know, it, it, there's an ownership thing, and, and that's what made us successful. You know, we, we love going to work in the morning. We love seeing the reaction of the customer who picked it up and, and wanting to grow from there. And that, to me, was very important. Even as we, when we grew and we were able to raise a lot of money, the concept always was that we need an owner in the store. We need someone who understands that local community uh, and who's going to engage with the customer because ours is a different type of a transaction. It's it's very emotional. It you know it's somebody who wants to celebrate something good. It's somebody who wants to make somebody's day. So when you have that local owner there, it, it, it goes a long way. 
And you mentioned, too, so everything's local. Does someone have to be good artistically in order to be create these things, or do you now have kind of the templates, so to speak, that they can, that helps them with it? So both. One, the template, and second, we have, we've de- designed a very good training system where people can spend time uh, on, on the on, – um, on, on our training system and learn how to make everything. Uh, but what we want is someone who who um, wants to take care of customers, who, who wants people to smile, and, and as soon as they see the arrangement or get the arrangement, um, that they love making people's day. And that's the type of owner we want. Beyond that, we'll do everything else in, in getting them ready to be able to make the arrangements and deliver and have all the systems in place. Are there still locations available? Oh, of course, yes. We have uh, we in the U.S. We'll probably have another six to seven hundred locations before we've kind of uh, established all the different areas. We're at about thirteen hundred locations right now, and uh, it's still a, a long way to go. But it's not necessarily how many more locations we open, but you know the experience at those locations. So we have a pretty good footprint, but a, a, still a long way to go. And we're talking with the founder of Edible Arrangements, Tariq. For Farid, and you can go to edible.com or you can go to alliances.com because you're listening to Alliances Heroes. That's right. Are you a hero in business? Go to the place where entrepreneurs align. That's E L I A N C E S dot com. Now, you're also a philanthropist. You started uh, your the, the, the Tariq Farid Foundation supporting causes in the U.S. and around the world. I mean, that's incredible. That it certainly is the give back. What do you see as the most important lesson that we can give to our children about taking care of others? Uh, you know, I, 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 I was taught, taught, uh, always taught that there's no greater joy uh, than sharing and that uh, you have to take care of the community that takes care of you. So, uh, you know, the, at least my local community, wherever our stores are, our customers have always taken care of us, and it's our job to do as much as we can to give back. And a, a person never really goes poor by uh, focusing on what they do for the others, and, and, and that's what we try to do in our businesses. We want to make sure that the reaction is great, the response is great, the customers love what we do, and that's more important. I mean, my mother taught me a great thing, and I think I, I could pass that along. A uh, long time ago, I used to struggle with how much money I was making in my businesses, and she said something to me, uh, which literally defined my life. She said, honey, don't run after money. It runs really fast. Go do the right thing. It'll chase you. And after that, I only focused on doing the right thing, and and never really, and there were never a moment that I didn't have money. Even when I had had to give a little more than I was planning to give, I always got it back. And the and you know, there's just karma or whatever you want to call it. I think we have to instill that in the genera- next generation. If you want to be successful, you better focus a lot on what you do for others. And I mean, you're doing so much. You're creating jobs. You're creating the opportunity for people to be able to go into their business. We've got a little less than a minute left. I mean, you were born in Pakistan. You immigrated to the U.S. when you were 11. That in itself is just such a challenge in that. You ever wonder what you would have done had you not come to the U.S.? Oh, I, I, I hate to imagine that. I mean, I... I I don't think I would have accomplished anything uh, close to what I've accomplished by being in the U.S. It was such a blessing, and a lot of this give back has to do with because the community and the country has done so much for me. And uh, you know, it, it's easy. It's easy to all. All you have to do is look at the people you're growing up with. It, they're not any different than you, but they're struggling. And it's really the country, the environment, the people that give you that opportunity. Uh, that as you work hard, you're rewarded. So I'm very, very lucky. Again, we're talking to the founder. You can go to edible.com, the founder of Edible Arrangements. The American entrepreneur spirit is alive and well as we could see every week on our show. And Tariq Fareed is definitely one of those heroes we showcase because he built his business from nothing to over $480 million and creating the systems to run it, more than 1,300-plus franchises. He employs and even takes care of others at home and around the world. That is our hero for today. Thank you so much. David Kogan with Alliances.
You have been listening to Alliances Heroes, where heroes in business align. Alliances is the destination for entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, inventors, leaders, celebrities, and startups. To present your superpower, visit www.alliances.com. To unmask Alliances Heroes' secret identities, be sure to tune in every Thursday at 9 a.m. right here on Money Radio 1510 and 99.3 FM.